23 Illegal Things to Never Do in Among Us Among Us is a game all about the fine line between teamwork and betrayal. So whether you're an imposter trying to slip by or a crewmate trying to stay alive, these are the zero IQ plays that you need to avoid at all costs. And hey, that red subscribe button is looking pretty sus, so make sure to vote it out and keep us all safe. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Number 1. You ever hear that idle hands are the devil's tools? Well, it's no different in Among Us. If you're the secret killer and you're just hanging around like a lame duck and not doing anything, you're gonna look super suspicious to the rest of the group. For a game that's all about moving around and doing tasks, there's no reason you should be standing idle. And the same advice goes for any crewmates as well. As soon as you finish your task, you should not hang around for any reason. There's still so much you can do, whether that's checking cams, running laps around the base, you get it. Number 2. Those first few moments out of the cafeteria are some of the most important in the game. So in that case, don't make the mistake of running off by yourself and splitting off too much from the pack. Anything that sticks you out like a sore thumb is sure to get you called out in any emergency meetings. And plus, first impressions are everything. If the rest of the crew sees you split off and become an outcast right at the beginning of the game, you're going to be marked that way for the entire rest of the round. So don't mark yourself in the first few minutes and try to go in a group when you head off. Number 3. Being defensive is the clear mark of a liar. So if you're in a pivotal team meeting and you start to point fingers at other people to accuse them, you're going to really look like you're trying to divert the attention off yourself. As the imposter, your goal should not try to be directing the flow of the conversation, but instead, lay a little low and actually play along if someone else gets accused. Needlessly blaming others is a clear sign you're under pressure, and you don't need to show that as the calm and cool collected imposter. Number 4. In a game that's this synonymous with deception, alibis are the name of the game. And in heated moments, they're the only thing that's going to keep you on that ship instead of out in the cold darkness of space. So if you go into one of these pivotal calls without any idea what you did the last round, that's instantly putting a target on your back. Which could very well mean an instant end to your lifetime as an imposter, or instead just removing needlessly a crewmate. Regardless of which role you've been playing up to that point, remember to keep a firm grasp on what you've been doing during the round. And especially in the details, because that's where they like to hit the hardest. Number 5. It's pretty common knowledge to not kill when anyone's around. But even if physically the coast is clear, you gotta make sure to look out for the little signs around you. And that is, if you've got a kill plan in any of these locations and you're not looking for cameras and red lights as you do it, then you could instantly be setting yourself up to get called out. These are not hard to check for, so just make sure to keep your eyes peeled, and if you really can't avoid killing next to a camera, then what you're gonna have to do is sabotage the comms and do it that way. Number 6. In concept, venting is a huge advantage for the imposters, but if you don't use it properly, it could be a real giveaway for you. So by no means should you be needlessly vent hopping around the map. Keep in mind, this is a non-lethal way for the other crewmates to be able to point out that you're just the imposter they're looking for. So every time you hop in one of those gateways, you're giving them the perfect opportunity to call you out in a meeting. And moreover, don't go about using these fast travel points in really easy to catch locations, whether that's on cameras, out in the open, or even just places with high traffic. Don't get me wrong, they're key parts of your strategy, but they're just that, strategy. Don't just use these willy-nilly. Number 7. As an imposter, you carry a lot of stress trying not to get figured out. So it's easy that if you get accused, you want to actually turn against that person and take them out. And while that's understandable, it should absolutely not be a part of your game plan. If you kill your accuser right away, then it's going to be too obvious that you're trying to get rid of any leaks. So instead, keep your murderous tendencies at bay and let them live to see another day. Or round, I guess. Number 8. Since standing around isn't a great idea, faking tasks is the game you gotta play as an imposter. Although if you're not careful, that can become a dangerous game quick. You see, while some tasks just involve standing up against a wall and killing time, others have way more of a visual element. Which means if you're trying to fake a med bay scan or shooting at asteroids, you're right out of luck. Instead, you should be avoiding these things like the plague and only do them if someone asks you to. Otherwise, even with all the acting skills in the world, the lack of special effects is going to be a dead giveaway. Number 9. Emergencies can make for some of the key turning points in a killer's playbook. Although, if you keep avoiding that O2 mishap or reactor meltdown that you caused, it's going to put a real target on your visor. So, by no means should you willfully try to avoid your emergencies as the imposter. And instead, if you want to earn some trust, go over there and solve your own sabotage. That'll earn you some brownie points and might just keep you in the airlock another round. Number 10. When you put on the crewmate squad, you gotta put yourself in the shoes of a detective. Especially when you finish all your tasks. 
However, for as much as you feel like Sherlock Holmes hanging out at the security room, if the killer keeps seeing red dots on all the cameras, all you're giving them is the perfect camped opportunity to siphon you off. So either stay on the move to keep your hide, or you can try a technique to bait with the cameras, where you turn on and off the cameras to get the killer to do something risky. Otherwise, you're leaving a breadcrumb trail right to a snapped neck. Number 11. Now I know most of us don't like to do math, but here it's kind of important. You see, if you have four people left with one imposter among you, then if you vote out a crewmate accidentally, then the imposter only needs to get one kill that next round to win. That's a tough situation to avoid. So instead, you increase your odds if you skip the vote with four people left, and instead let them kill the other person and drop it down to three. That way you've got one more kill of evidence and a 50-50 shot of who goes out. Number 12. A lot of first-time imposters really like the idea of killing and doing the self-report. But unless you got killer on-the-fly alibi skills, this is a dead ringer to get a spotlight put right on your forehead. Because of course the other teammates are gonna ask questions like where you found the body, where were you, who else was in the room, you know, the whole gist. So unless you're ready for that trial by fire, I highly recommend holding the self-report away and instead letting someone else do the dirty work for you. Number 13. In some cases, the eyewitness doesn't just have to be the bystander that's with you next to storage. But rather, as the imposter, you set yourself up for a rough ride if you let yourself be seen going into the room to kill someone. Even leading a suspecting crewmate in the right direction might be enough to get you caught. So instead, keep your path off their records at every step of the way. Otherwise, you're keeping yourself way too close to the radius of the truth. Number 14. The whole point of being the imposter is to completely blend in with other members of the crew. So if you've been in the same lobby for a while and then all of a sudden you start acting differently, of course they're going to point their fingers at you. Who wouldn't? So instead, you might find better luck at trying to keep the same consistent persona across all of the games you play. If after every report you ask where's the body, then you gotta make sure to hit those marks every single time. Trying to change your persona that deep into it is just gonna be way too obvious. And honestly, you don't need the extra hassle. Number 15. As a member of the crew, it's your job to find out exactly who the imposters are. So if you're letting someone leave the call without saying a word, you're not doing the job right. At every single meeting, your sole goal should be to try to find out as much evidence as possible and then use that to make your deductions. If you're letting someone stay silent, you're neglecting the kind of threat they could be. And honestly, you're making that potential imposter's job a whole lot easier. Go through the list, make sure everyone's accounted for, and then move on. Try not to have a silent someone in your crew. Number 16. The intermediary parts where you're hanging out between matches inside the lobby can be some of the most boring in the game. And look, I'm not looking to do much here either. But they also house a lot of really key details that you gotta pay attention for. And the main one is if you're going to that next round not knowing exactly what that big wall of text says, you're starting yourself at a disadvantage. Especially as the killer, if you miss important details like faster or slower speeds, improved lighting, or the changes to the quantity or quality of tasks, you're avoiding critical red flags that'll tip you off to how you play the next game. And all of those ignored rules will be the tiny things that make each round riskier and riskier for you to take. So before your next match starts, do a quick skim through the details, and you'll already be miles ahead of the rest of the competition, which didn't even bother to read it. Number 17. Faking to fix a critical sabotage like an oxygen or reactor meltdown as the killer can be a great way to rack up an early win. And don't get me wrong, it's a great strategy. But when you're doing it, do not open up a panel unless someone's there to see you. When you pull up one of these minigames, your kill cooldown isn't going to diminish. Which means you're putting a perfectly good sabotage to waste, and effectively wasting your time by being there. As the imposter, you should only do one of these when absolutely necessary. Number 18. To the innocent crew, tasks are everything. Which means that smart players are going to be keeping a real close eye to who does them. And what they're paying attention to is this ball right up here, which moves every time someone finishes tasks. Which is important to you as the killer, because if you're faking a task and move before that bar goes up, then it's so obvious that you didn't actually do it. Now, this isn't to say to loiter at that same task for two minutes, that's another giveaway as well. But instead, you should be making sure to get away from it as soon as that bar goes up and gives you an alibi. Otherwise, you're just feeding critical information to the Miles Edgeworths who would try to take you down. Number 19. Like any good killer, you gotta lurk in the shadows, and this goes tenfold for when you're in the vents. As a killer, you can't let your actions be mutually exclusive. So if you're looking for a fast pass route to the cafeteria, I highly recommend sabotaging the power lights. That way at least you shrink the innocent's visibility and give yourself much more darkness to move around in freely. 
which can really close off some of the open areas they usually try to avoid as the imposter. Number 20. Just as revealing yourself as a loner isn't a good idea as the imposter, it's also not going to work out if you're always socially distancing as a crewmate. Remember, groups are your safety. You're way less likely to be killed if there's an eyewitness right next by you. And also, there's definite benefits to trying to catch on someone's trust early on in the game. That way, if fingers start to wrongfully get pointed at you, you might be able to at least have one person who stands up for what's right. And that can be more worthwhile than you think. So whether it's a pair of two or a group of three, the buddy system might be the best way to get through this with your head still intact. Number 21. Now this is the kind of misdemeanor that even the developers don't like. Because even if disconnecting seems like the optimal strategy to get through some of these things, it's definitely not something that's cool to do. So yes, while it might be technically effective if the crewmates are going to win by tasks to leave if you're the one that has tasks left, it's a bad faith move you should never try to do. And it might be the quickest way to speedrun having no one else want to play with you again. Number 22. A lot of the trust in Among Us hinges entirely on the groups that you're running with. So while as a killer it might be tempting to try and go convince your innocence by being next to a couple of groups, if you join too late, you might just be that creepy weirdo everyone's doubting just a little bit. Pulling off this mistake might just seem like a last ditch effort gone wrong, which is even worse if you're an innocent crewmate that just got in at the wrong time. If you're not with a group at the start, then your chances of joining one late game are only going to be worse and worse the longer the game goes on. Number 23. Electrical's a real hotspot for imposter activity. Not only are there plenty of tasks to fake in there, a vent to get out, and also a key junction point with the lights, but also it's secluded enough in the map that it's really simple to get some easy kills in there. So if you're a crewmate trying to see another day on the ship, you should not leave your tasks in there for last. By taking this on early, you not only help your chances of being discovered if you are killed, but you also might get some immunity by hanging out with the rest of the herd. So take these right off your to-do list as soon as possible, and then go on with the rest of the tasks. And with that, folks, make sure to impale that subscribe button down below. And until next time, take care and have a good one. All right.